New York City Hall was swarmed just a few days ago by African migrants. A hearing on the experiences of African migrants in New York City drew a crowd of more than 1,000 people, some of whom were reported under the false assumption that they would be getting work visas or even green cards. Representative Nicole Malatakis said that the crowds who descended on City Hall had a sense of entitlement spurred on by the mayor's policies. New York City Mayor Eric Adams has defended the Big Apple as a sanctuary city for migrants. Months after he himself said that a border surge would destroy his own city. Also commenting on the issue was billionaire Tesla CEO Elon Musk, who himself is an immigrant. Elon Musk said that he was in favor of legal immigration, being an immigrant himself, but for the billionaire tech giant, allowing a flood of millions of unvetted people to enter the United States illegally is insane. Now, still on the topics of migrants in NYC, I found a report from September mentioning 41 people having been arrested at New York City's Migrant Roosevelt Hotel in the span of four months ever since the city turned the former swanky Prohibition era hotel into a migrant shelter in May of 2023. Now, most of the alleged crimes stem from the domestic violence incidents. Definitely some scary stuff out here, folks, so be careful, you guys. Meanwhile, in Congress, they've just pushed through a $95.3 billion aid package that funds the fight against Russia, but not just Russia, the defense of Israel and resistance against China. House Speaker Mike Johnson mentioned the far-right Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene and Republican rebels especially saying that Marjorie Taylor Greene unsuccessfully attempted to derail the deal with multiple amendments, including one meant to troll her critics, calling for the development of space laser technology on the southwest border. The funding for the Ukraine will come at a crucial time. CIA Director William Burns warned just a few days ago that without additional U.S. military aid, Ukraine could lose the war with Russia. And that could happen by the end of the year because it's running out of ammunition at an alarming rate. And another thing they were able to slip in to together with this foreign aid package, a TikTok ban that's got everybody talking. So the House once again passed a bill that could ban TikTok for the United States unless its Chinese parent company ByteDance divests it. Part of the package of the foreign aid bill that seeks to provide military aid to the Ukraine and Israel and humanitarian aid to Gaza. And honestly, a ban on a Chinese company owning TikTok does kind of make sense. For starters, the Chinese government blocks every major American web and social media company, including Meta, Google, Twitter, X, etc. It's entirely unfair that China, a very powerful adversary of the United States, can wage its influence on American citizens, meanwhile barring American web companies from its shores. And that is just one of the reasons we'll get into later. So make sure you stay tuned to the end, but let's go ahead and dive right in. So first, the throngs of African migrants gathered outside New York City Hall. Check out the footage right here. Now, apparently, they were gathered there for the city council hearing on the black migrant experience. But Americans complain how we can't fix our homelessness, but we'll give homeless shelters to illegal immigrants. Now, some of the people gathered there were even reportedly under the false impression that they would be getting work visas or green cards. One source said that the crowd was mostly comprised of newly arrived migrants from the Western African nation of Guinea. The hearing comes as an influx of illegal immigrants has put a strain on the city's resources. Late last year, New York City Mayor Eric Adams warned that the city was reaching its breaking point. More recently, Eric Adams said that a border surge would destroy his city. Representative Nicole Malatakis also commented how the crowds who have descended on City Hall have a sense of entitlement spurred on by the mayor's policies. She pointed out how citizens of other countries believe that American citizens struggling to pay for a roof over their heads, they are responsible for housing them indefinitely. Tesla CEO Elon Musk 
also commented on X, even for him who's an immigrant himself, allowing a flood of millions of unvetted people to enter the United States illegally is insane. Now, just to show you guys, the Roosevelt Hotel in NYC was turned into a migrant shelter in May of 2023. Come September, they've reported at least 41 people having been arrested at the Roosevelt Hotel for domestic violence incidents. Arrests at the site have included an asylum seeker accused of bashing an employee in the head with a no parking sign in June after the worker chunked him from the building for being unruly. The worker ended up with a six inch gash on his head and Mayor Eric Adams made an unannounced visit to the hotel within days to survey the situation himself. Some other migrant shelters had some issues too. A 20 year old migrant woman was arrested for allegedly slapping an NYPD officer who was attempting to confiscate her unregistered motorbike in front of the Stratford Arms Hotel on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. The woman, who also had been arrested in July for allegedly attacking her boyfriend, was freed without bail the next day. So I guess they just kind of like put her in timeout. Yet, New York City Mayor Eric Adams, he continues to defend the Big Apple as a sanctuary city for migrants, months after he said that a border surge would destroy his city. Is he bipolar? Now something's definitely got to be done here. Well, looking at Congress, they seem to be preoccupied with passing even more foreign aid for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. Not to mention the TikTok ban that's got everybody talking, so don't go away guys. We'll get to that in just a second. But just a quick sidebar to express my thanks and gratitude for the love and the support that you guys show this channel. I want to thank you guys so much for always watching and lighting up the like button. And if you haven't already, I highly recommend subscribing to the channel and tapping that notification bell. That way you stay updated on everything that's happening in our country, especially now in this crucial time in our history. All right. So like I mentioned earlier, while New York City is dealing with a major migrant crisis and asking for help, Congress is laser focused on passing the foreign aid bill for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. House Speaker Mike Johnson last weekend crushed an offensive by far right representative Marjorie Taylor Greene and Republican rebels pushing through a $95.3 billion aid package that funds the fight against Russia, the defense of Israel, and resistance against China. Lawmakers, in a rare bipartisan effort, overwhelmingly approved the four bill package, including one measure providing $60.8 billion for Ukraine. About 80% of that money will go toward replenishing supplies of US made weapons and ammunition, another direct military assistance. Another $9.5 billion is in the form of a forgivable loan. The bill passed 311 to 112 with all NAY votes coming from Republicans, including Green, who was hailed as Moscow Marjorie by members of both major political parties. But really, according to my uncle, who I always talk about on this channel about this stuff, he feels that the news here is that the House did anything. But what do you guys think? Other comments I read online said something like, where's the $95 billion for the homeless and veterans? I mean, they do have a point there, I think. Johnson told reporters the foreign aid package which assists Israel, Ukraine, Taiwan, and other allies isn't perfect but is desperately needed because it's a dangerous time for Americans. Now according to Johnson, three of our primary adversaries, Russia, Iran, and China, they're working together and they're a global threat to our prosperity and our security. Their advance threatens the free world and it demands American leadership. CIA Director William Burns also warned before the vote that without additional U.S. military aid, Ukraine could lose the war with Russia by the end of the year because it's running out of ammunition at an alarming rate. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky thanked Johnson and other House members who voted to assist his country, saying it keeps history on the right track. In addition to Ukraine's support, a measure in the bill provides roughly $17 billion in direct military aid for Israel and a little over $9 billion in humanitarian aid for Gaza and other war-torn regions. A third amendment provides $8.1 billion for the Indo-Pacific region to help ward off China, about half of which is set aside for Taiwan. A fourth bill includes many Republican priorities that are also endorsed by Democrats, including a ban on TikTok if its Chinese-based owner doesn't give up ownership of the popular app and allowing the U.S. to seize about $5 billion in frozen Russian central bank assets to rebuild the Ukraine. Now, that TikTok ban is certainly something worth talking about as it hit 20,000 searches on Google, ranking ninth on Google Trends. Basically, this bill would force the Chinese conglomerate ByteDance to sell TikTok to a buyer that's not a foreign adversary or face a ban in the United States. And now, since it's included in the foreign aid package, they may push it through the Senate with limited debate. So here's why we need a TikTok ban sooner rather than later for both our kids and for our country. For the good of our kids and for our country, it's crucial to pass strong laws quickly. So here's why this is needed, plus an alternative plan to improve relations between the US and China. So first, the Chinese government blocks every major American web and social media company including Meta, Google, Twitter, 
X, etc. But still, their country manages to influence American citizens with the help of their platform. I don't know if I have to tell you guys, but this is kind of an unfair situation. But second, there's already a precedent for forced sales. In 2020, the dating app Grindr was forced to be sold from its Chinese owners after the U.S. expressed data security concerns. I mean, the U.S. has laws that stop foreign ownership of broadcasting companies, so why should China have control over what we see on our phones, laptops, and other devices when we don't let them do that with our TVs and our radios? Doesn't make sense. Third, TikTok has a history of severe data privacy issues. Sure, American social media companies collect data too, but TikTok may have kind of crossed the line. In 2022, ByteDance staff were discovered spying on U.S. journalists covering the company, using data from the reporter's TikTok accounts to suss out their sources. In 2023, TikTok employees were caught sharing American users' personal information with ByteDance in China using driver's licenses and addresses. Oh, and by the way, under China's national intelligence law, Chinese firms must submit any information demanded by the government, including data on foreign nationals. Technically, the United States companies have to do the same thing. But this has led the United States government banning TikTok from all government devices. Fourth, TikTok can be a tool used for spreading propaganda and misinformation. Now, in their defense, so can other platforms. But they're saying that TikTok often is used by the Chinese government. FBI Director Christopher Wray warned that TikTok could be used to influence American users or control their devices. American social media platforms might promote harmful content, but they don't have a governmental agenda driving their overseas decision. So this is a big difference here. Fifth, TikTok puts American youth at risk. It has 170 million U.S. users and a third are 14 or younger. That's 50 to 60 million American children whose data is being collected and whose minds are being influenced. In China, TikTok's version for kids, Douyin, it provides educational content and it limits screen time. But in the West, TikTok shows trending videos that are often shallow or even sexually explicit. It's not surprising that kids in China aspire to be astronauts. Meanwhile, in America, they want to be social media influencers. Given all of this, what's stopping legislation from moving forward? Well, politics. Some Democratic strategists warn that banning TikTok could hurt youth voter engagement. But these worries, they might be exaggerated. A Biden campaign advisor recently mentioned that their youth turnout program is not overly dependent on TikTok. Opponents of the ban say that it could limit free speech and lead to legal battles. Many Americans use TikTok for entertainment and even make a living from it. These are legitimate concerns. However, users have shown that they can adapt. MySpace users were moved to Facebook, Vine users switched over to YouTube and TikTok, and Skype users, well, they went to Zoom. TikTok's growth in the U.S. is already slowing, so maybe people will migrate on their own. Alternatively, here's a fresh idea. If China lifts its ban on American web companies, then TikTok can stay in the U.S. untouched. Wouldn't that be a great gesture toward better relations? Now, some say this bill still won't go anywhere because the losers in the Senate, their words, not mine, they still won't do anything, especially to Democrats. Day by day, I kind of feel like America is becoming more and more under threat. That's why I highly recommend subscribing to the channel and tapping that notification bell. That way you won't miss out on important information and analysis like this one. Speaking of that, what do you guys think? Do you feel like our country is under attack based on the current migrant crisis and apps like TikTok taking advantage of our personal data and our children? Share your thoughts down below and I'll see you guys on the next one.